Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Vipul Chawla. I am working as a software engineer in Geeky Ants uh, for the last one year, and I am here to talk on the topic accessibility in Flutter. So we, as a developer, developing a lots of apps, adding a cool features to it, and taking it to the next level, right? But what about the users with wide range of abilities, having visual, auditory, or motor impairments? Who cannot take full advantage of the apps? So here's uh, here comes the use of accessibility, uh, which we can use to make app more accessible. These are the contents which I will be talking about. Introduction to accessibility, practice building accessible features, best practices for making app accessible, and the last steps for testing and debugging accessibility. So, in the context of mobile apps, this simply means to design the apps that are usable by people with wide range of abilities, including those with visual, auditory, or motor impairments. It is very important for a number of reasons, as it can increase the reach and usability of an app. These are the Flutter's built-in accessibility features. Uh, first one is text contrast, which we already know about theme data. So what we can do is to just use uh, uh, use it for the text styles for the default text styles, and if we can, uh, we have to use for some specific uh, text. We can simply use text style class as well. Support for any screen readers. So Flutter apps can be used with screen readers, which allow users with visual impairments to access the app content through audio output. Semantic labels. We as a developer can add semantic labels to widgets in Flutter, which will give a context and meaning to the screen reader users. For example, a label might indicate that a button is used to submit a form, or that a text field is used to enter a password. Keyboard accessibility. We can use focus management and keyboard shortcuts to make it easier for the users with motor impairments. Which uh, who can navigate and interact with the app using keyboard easily. These are the examples. So for the text contrast, we can simply use theme data as I already discussed. Uh, we can uh, set the text style for the headlines and body text, or etc. And for the specific text, we can use text type. Support for skin readers with semantic labels. So in this case, as we can see, uh, so what uh, we have to uh, what we have to do is to just wrap any widget with a semantic widget and provide a descriptive label to it. Like in this case, there are two buttons, but both texts are having submit, right? So when a screen reader user will uh, click on it, so it will give an audio output as submit your match prediction values or similarly uh, in the below one it will say submit your poll answers which is um, more accurate keyboard accessibility so in this example we are using a shortcut widget for a text field that uses a focus node to allow the users to submit the form by pressing the enter key on the keyboard so in this example, we can see that we are using shortcut widget by providing a uh, key set value, uh, and in this case, we are using enter key, right? And we are performing uh, action uh, by clicking on it, and which is calling a function submit form, and that's how we can use shortcut widget to it. These are some of the best practices for making app accessible use descriptive text so that it will give a context and meaning to the users provide alternate text for images make sure all the important functionality is accessible through keyboard shortcuts and the last familiarize, uh, familiarize yourself with accessibility guidelines such as the web content accessibility guidelines or the android accessibility guidelines uh, we have to follow these guidelines when designing and building our app which is also available online as you can go through it.
these are some of the steps uh, for testing and debugging accessibility use the flutter inspector which will give you the visual dependence representation of the widget so that you can simply verify whether we have set the appropriate accessibility properties on the widget or not use a screen reader it is nothing but a talkback feature which is already available in both android and ios devices and we can simply use this uh, uh, for uh, testing the accessibility use the android accessibility scanner app so what we have to do is to simply download the app from the play store and install the app and after that you can use that to find the potential issues i will be talking about it more in the coming slide as well like how to use it use the accessibility inspector in xcode so same as the scanner app for the android we can use export export developer tools uh, which already provide the same functionality so you so that you don't have to explicitly download any app and the last one is to use flutter testing library which provide a test widget function to simulate the user interaction with the app and verify if it is behaving as expected so these are the screenshots for the talk back like how to use it so what you have to do is to simply go to the settings search for the talkback feature and turn on the accessibility so like after that uh, when you open your app and click on any ui component it will wrap in a green box as you can see so what it will do is just is, it will start giving audio output uh, for all the titles and description in it and and after that uh, you will get the idea about it and find the potential issues if there and make the changes accordingly this these are for the android accessibility scanner so after installing the app uh, go to the settings search for the accessibility scanner and after turning the accessibility you will see uh, a floating action button uh, which you can see uh, in the top center which is a icon check right so when you click on it there are two options record and snapshot both will work same the only difference is when you click on the snapshot it will take a particular screen and generate a report and find the potential issue so that you can make the changes and fix that while on the other hand uh, you can use the record so, so when uh, you want to navigate through multiple screens and find the potential issues at the same time and behind the scene it will take a snapshot and it will generate a report something like in the fourth image as you can see so what it will do it will show you all the suggest give you all the suggestions like in my case as you can see it is saying uh, item level so it is saying this like this item may not have a label readable by screen readers as i already uh, didn't use accessibility in this app that's why it is showing something like this same as android accessibility scanner app uh, xcode accessibility support is also there so what you have to do is to simply use xcode and when you click on the xcode with uh, xcode uh, which is on the top left corner open developer tools and after that when you click on accessibility inspector so it will show you something like this uh, and after that what you have to do is to select the specific target like in my case i'm using my simulator as you can see after that um, as you can see uh, like when you have uh, you hover on your app like in my case uh, there is a app bar having a title formula 1 so there are some of the details are there which is saying inspected element is formula 1 which is heading and there are details also the basic which is a label type title value and also there are three uh, buttons 
in the top right corner as you can see first one is uh, info icon which is nothing but inspection the second one is audit and third one is setting uh, and this one is the first option which we can use and in the second option uh, when you click on audit there is a button run audit right so when you click on it it will find all the potential issues in your app and it will show you here in the inspector uh, as you can see in my case it is contest failed so it is giving you some suggestions and you can simply make the changes and it will be fixed and and all this process is an iterative approach like you have to do multiple times to make the app more accessible these are the resources which i followed uh, first one is flutter docs itself and the second one is medium article which i followed so thank you everyone for your time